So I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Penny Hay from Bath University in the UK. And Penny is going to talk to us about reimagining learning spaces of possibility. It's over to you, Penny. Thank you so much, Martina. It's uh, really delightful to be here and what an amazing group of people. I'm really sorry at the last minute we had to change the time, but uh, it's excellent to see so many of you. So um, you may have seen my abstract. So um, new spaces of possibility are opening up in the light of the poly crisis that we're all experiencing. And as educators, and especially educators in higher education, we have a shared purpose to offer an alternative creative approach to learning and teaching. So in our partnership work with Bath Spa University and House of Imagination, our charity, we are researching experimental sites of pedagogical innovation. We are making creativity visible, placing emphasis on social value, social impact, and the importance of social and environmental justice. Our shared creative methodology drives our ambition for artistic excellence. We engage students, educators, artists, and creative professionals in creative and reflective practice that places the arts, culture and creativity at the heart of a future pedagogy. These spaces can be interrogated to distill a repertoire of creative pedagogical characteristics that optimise agency, freedom, choice and imagination. So let me share my presentation with you. It is very informal and I would really welcome any feedback, any questions, any observations in the chat as well. So uh, let me share my screen. I'm going to start with this statement. It's actually Jeremy Della quoting William Morris. I do not want art for a few any more than I want education for a few or freedom for a few. So as Martina said, um, I am a reader in creative teaching and learning and a research fellow at Bar Spa University. And in that context, I get to set up these experimental sites of pedagogical innovation, well, hopefully. And I'm also director of research uh, for a charity that's now called House of Imagination. But um, we renamed ourselves in memory of Sir Ken Robinson, who was our patron for 20 years. We used to be called Five by Five. And our first book, it's on the reference list for you, was called Researching Children, Researching the World. And so the focus I want to take tonight is the work we do at the university and how we work in service to the community alongside the creative and cultural sector, but importantly, our students and staff in higher education. So um, I was lucky to work with Jeremy Della at the Arnold Feeney Gallery um, when I was a teacher and uh, we co-designed an exhibition based on the Manic Street Preachers um, Memorabilia Fan Club alongside the community. Um, I'm also a big fan of Bob and Roberta Smith, and I really do believe that every uh, school should be an art school, whether that's a university school or whether that's a state school um, or whether that's a different informal setting. And I think art is a human right. It is part of the United Nations uh, articles for um, obviously in terms of what's happening at the moment in our country in England um, we are looking at an education system that needs to be reimagined so um, the United Nations Convention for Human Rights is absolutely vital. I when I trained in fine art and education I'm actually um, an alum uh, uh, from Bath Spa University in the days when the art college was in Corsham Bath Art Academy and then we combined with the College for Education and, and moved into the city. Um, I mean, I haven't stayed in Bath for the whole of my career, but I'll tell you a little bit about that. But I taught in the Southwest for eight, nine years, and I specialised in primary and special needs education and, and specialised in school refusers, children who didn't really want to go to school. And the reason I put, I won't show the animation, but this is the live animation from Bake Off that one of my former students co-designed. 
He was so say a disaffected student, didn't like going to school, but of course, all I had to do was ask him the question, what would you like to do? What's your ideas and how do you want to share them? And he's since won a BAFTA and co-directed Robin Robin for Aardman. I was lucky then, I, went, I worked in Glasgow um, for a year, but I, then I moved to London and taught at the Institute of Education uh, and Goldsmiths for seven years. So in that context, I worked alongside amazing artists like Sheila Berman and Yinka Shonabare. And I was in the city and the city as a campus for learning, working alongside London Art Design um, Education Group and Goldsmiths. Obviously, we co-designed the Centre for Arts Learning. And in my last couple of years at Goldsmiths, I worked at Tate Modern on the learning policy. So I've always worked in um, in formal and informal um, state education settings and alongside higher education communities as well. Importantly, with artists and the creative cultural sector, creative professionals. And when I worked at Tate Modern, it was a joy to be able to have a have a wonderful gallery without the public and just invite children and uh, artists and schools and colleagues at Goldsmiths to come in and play with experimental sites of learning to then co-design learning invitations. So following our fascinations and here on the left, year four, working with our students at Goldsmiths on a maths lesson um, on infinity in Yoyo Kusama's installation on polka dots. And a lot of our work was inspired by the practice in Reggio Emilia in Italy, northern Italy. And visit, I've been to and fro to Reggio for the last 20 years. And in fact, I was there just before the pandemic hit, uh, celebrating Loris Malaguzzi's 100th birthday. But the idea that, you know, you arrive in the in Reggio and you feel this was peace day and you feel the energy, you feel the creativity. Everybody's involved in the conversation about co-designing um, a school system, if you like, based on relationships and inquiry. And I think importantly, it's really about that kind of palpable. What I use the term is making creativity visible. And obviously the, the, the preschools in Reggio Emilia were set up in response to the fascist regime in the 40s. And so the parents and the educators working together with pedagogistas, mentors and atelieristas, the artists, to co-design a, 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 a system of relationships around an emergent framework, learning framework, not even using the word curriculum. So inspired by Carolina Rinaldi's phrase, you know, every child is um, competent and creative from the moment of birth. And then really thinking about that, how we co-design an education system together. So that's what I'm really thinking about at the moment in the English context. And I think the other thing from our charity's point of view is that you know, we were inspired by Reggio practice, but not to invert a commas copy it in an English context, but to take inspiration. And, and we work alongside contemporary artists, practicing artists of all art forms. So here, a child on the left inspired by their own shadow, but on the right, taking children to the exhibition at the Arnofini in Bristol, um, being inspired by artists like Christian Bartanski, playing with shadow, you know, scary themes in safe places. And so I set up the project 5 by 5 22 years ago now, oh my gosh, and it was really based on the concept of um, philosophical, philosophical inquiry alongside children, young people. So on the left, how um, how can we bring the outside inside? And on the right, how big does a map have to be to be inside it? And those of you that know um, philosophy for children, a lot of the learning came from that kind of um, thinking. And important, I think Borges actually wrote a story, didn't he, about a cartographer who made the map the size of the world. And I think that children are powerful thinkers and knowledge constructors. And so you can see that in any context, whether it was with um, Sir Ken, I miss him dearly. Uh, he was a dear friend. Um, and obviously our work is in his legacy now, but whether it's setting up a pop-up um, learning wall at our university, this is our media wall, working with professors and artists and our students and Sam there on um, Ken's right, 
really thinking about his class he's brought a year four class to the university so children seeing themselves you know their aspirations to go to university later but also working in a very flat level way with our um, professional academic staff as well as our students um, and tutors and on the top right my PGC students so I teach on the postgraduate certificate certificate for education and I run the art specialism so I'm training teachers intending teachers and then supporting teachers professional development throughout their career so many teachers I've worked with in this area for you know the 20 years that I've been here I got a job at the university um, in 2007 as senior lecturer and then I um, have recently the last few years been a reader so yes and and it's not just the arts and i think importantly it's about setting up inquiry based learning so here on in the middle um at the bottom this is a math lesson co-designed with professor alf coles at the university of bristol where we're inviting children to work alongside our students at the university to co-design inquiry based learning where the children are investigating um, mathematical concepts but together and so here you can see they've even invented um, inquiry uh, and trigonometry and for my PhD I worked alongside the same group of children for five years um, at a local primary school and documented all of their learning so rather than going in as an academic or a teacher, I, I went in as an artist and invited the children to follow their fascinations alongside me and documented all of their learning. So every child, actually, I made a book just as I would teach in the art college, just hide her name. And so every child had a body of work that they could then celebrate. In fact, um, my new book's coming out. It's just gone to print. Uh, it's called Children Are Artists, funnily enough. So um, obviously, you know, uh, Bo in the previous um, slide was fascinated by colour and pattern and Jay in this slide, not their real names, fascinated with mountains and monsters. But this body of work from when they were four and five till nine or so, the five years, and then documenting their interest and their, their learning and to understand the children better. So here we would set up a studio environment, invite the parents and carers in, but also, you know, we had visits from the university students, Anna Craft, who was my PhD supervisor, sadly she died of cancer in 2014, um, midway during my PhD, but um, everything in, again, in her legacy. I've been lucky to work with amazing people, but you know, inviting artists in, so Richard Long on the top right to, respond to the children's critical inquiry around you know the day after bonfire night how can we make a drawing the size of the lapa how can we bring in natural materials and they asked him really good questions you know where do your ideas come from and Richard said well when I was a child you know I was fascinated with sticks and stones and bones and wanted to go for walks so I made it my life's work and I think importantly that question came out with the local children's theatre um, here, a group of um, wonderful students and teachers, artists and our students at the university working together on asking that question, what is school? What is learning? Um, how can we support a system of learning that is about relationships, about compassion and collaboration and care and curiosity? In fact, we've redesigned our PGC now, so we've put the four C's. Well, I would argue more than four, but critical thinking, creativity, compassion, care, climate, all of those at the heart, collaboration at the heart of the learning process. And here's um, with the director of the egg, who's in the pink skirt there, Kate Cross. She's um, a dear friend, but we've worked together for a long time, co-designing the concept of School Without Walls. So children being in residence at the local theatre, the local museum for a whole term and then all their learning comes from being in the city as a campus for learning. So co-designing the learning alongside the community, alongside the artists. So here Matt on the top left, one of my PGC students in residence in the Egg Theatre. So the city then 
as a campus for learning, at learning everywhere. So the children in the city with the freedom of the city, all safeguarding in place, the children working, working in inverted commas, work, the child play as child's work. I think Vivian Gussin Paley said, but in the shop, learning how to um, be in the creative industries, if you like, all keeping a sketchbook, a journal of their learning and visiting plays on the stage bringing their ideas back up to the studio and trying them out in a hundred languages of expression to borrow a phrase from Reggio Emilia you know covering the studio on the top floor in the egg with paper so that everybody is involved in inquiries learning how to use film cameras and photography properly alongside um, creative role models and so, you know, my students who are the art specialists then work alongside the children and then staff. Obviously, we embed the whole, we integrate professional development in all of the work we do. And importantly, the adults and the children all keep a reflective journal. So they're um, reflecting on their learning all the time. I met my arts specialist this morning and everybody has a reflective journal and everybody has a digital portfolio. Um, as well as a real portfolio if they choose one. So here's Matt, you can see he was an animator and working alongside the children who would co-designed these lovely dens based on going to see a play on the stage at the end called White. And so this was the provocation. And the learning is real and real world and palpable and authentic. It's out in the city. And here uh, the children have co-designed a, a um, a game around it's a math lesson around spies dressing up as spies and then finding each other around coordinates of the city and during that time the Ofsted inspector on the left hand side of the right hand photo um, I was sent a text by the head teacher saying the Ofsted inspector's on the way and I thought it was um, a joke because she came and dressed up as a, in a trench coat and I went up to embrace her as an actor, thinking that she'd come from the egg, but she was really an Ofsted inspector. Anyway, they did really well and they got outstanding, what, outstanding, whatever that means. But it is really important that child initiated learning is embedded in the curriculum at all ages, whether we're teaching children or students at the university, but also in our own work as well, following our own fascinations, being driven by that kind of passion and curiosity. So taking the children out into the city, also into the woods, into the um, churches and into the playgrounds, the cinemas, the sports fields, the forests, the fields, and, and that learning is everywhere. I gave a presentation at the House of Commons about this um, a couple of years ago, and it gave rise to a, an article that I can share with you around creative activism. But learning isn't just in the, in the school. And so taking the children to the art gallery, taking children up to our, our art exhibition for our um, degree show, where they'll meet, uh, this is Catherine's work, one of our students, where the children were in conversation with Catherine about her painting. And having these, as I said, role models so that children can see themselves, um, they can find somebody that they want to be like in the future. And trying out those creative processes together with academics and creative professionals so our technicians teaching the children how to use clay and uh, ceramic processes properly and being introduced to the fashion students and the textile students and thinking about the processes that the students are using we our phrase in our art school is thinking through making and we've been taking over meanwhile spaces um, for several years now. So using empty shops to have exhibitions alongside the children. So here's one of my students, Craig, on the left, who's working alongside a school in Bath. Um, in fact, Bath is misconceived as a white middle class city. It has pockets of deprivation that are heartbreaking. And this um, particular school is in Southwest Bath, where some in some time, in some context, some of these children have never been into the city. Uh, never been into the centre. So to have their work exhibited in the city and to be valued and respected, and they had a voice. They, all had, they also had exhibitions in the lift at the Egg Theatre um, and in the studio. So you can see here this kind of community of practice that 
all the students and the children working together with the artists. This was just before the parents arrived, where we had a celebration on the stage and in the auditorium um, with the children to share their learning, their sketchbooks. And then the children with my PGC students led them around um, the environment to see their learning. And not just in the Egg Theatre either, we're lucky in Bath, we've got 12 beautiful museums and galleries where the children can um, be invited to find out about their own context, but also learn about different contexts, different cultures, different times. Um, and that's really important. So the Holborn Museum is a, a, a brilliant partner in our work. And also children were in residence there where we were looking at the Holborn is um, adjacent to the canal and near the river. So the children were looking at the views of the city and co-curating the blue and, blue and green of the city um, and then collaborating on these are large panels, large canvas panels where they collaborate together, three children on each panel, um, thinking about their city, their landscape city. So this is kind of at the heart of the, the PGC programme that I run, but I think also we run programmes out of um, Bath and in local um, authorities. Across, we work in about 10 local authorities and here in Bristol working with um, um, various communities in North West, in Hartcliffe, in Eastern, and working with parents and carers to really think about what it is to play alongside children, what it is to be a two-year-old, how can we play um, as adults alongside each other as well as with our families. And that playful pedagogy permeates a lot of the work that I do at the university. So setting up immersive environments of inquiry um, so that we can work together. And we work closely in partnership with Bath Cultural Education Partnership. So that's obviously linked with the university, House of Imagination, our charity, the Egg Theatre, but also Bath Festivals, all the museums, Bath Philharmonia, um, a charity called Mentoring Plus, which supports young people at risk in the city and so on. So shining a light on the creativity of the region. And then together we've co-designed held by our university and a digital intern that we've um, recently had working with us so that every child to flourish, everyone an artist, and the focus on creativity and imagination, nature and the environment, mental health and well-being, and creative engagement. And I think increasingly in the, in the face of the poly crisis, you know, especially, I was talking to Martina just now, especially children and young people's mental health and well-being. So I am devoting the rest of my career to making sure that every child and young person has imagination, nature and well-being. I think we should every city should have a commissioner for um, imagination uh, and well-being and future generations. So 10 years ago, um, I met Andrew Grant. Tw no, sorry, 12 years ago, I met Andrew Grant um, and he designed the super trees in Singapore and Bath resident runs a, um, a local company Grant Associates in Bath and in Singapore and I said to him on a walk up to the art school um let let's you know co-design a project together and he said well let's put creativity on the pavement and I said let's call it forest of imagination so every year we co-design a familiar place and reimagine it alongside the community so working with Bath by University, Grant Associates, Fields and Clegg Bradley Studios Architects and um, local schools, um, local businesses and the creative and cultural sector and this has become a, um, a live case study now for knowledge exchange and for our social impact work um, where we have become a um, a social enterprise as a university with Goldmark outstanding status and Forest of Imagination is one of the case studies. So here at the bottom left you can see our design students co-designing dens for local schools and local families and those three students, four students, I couldn't see Paul in the background there, um, Matt in the middle leads that group and every year they work with Forest of Imagination. So working with um, local partners and here on the bottom right, my PGC students 
dressed up as actors. In fact, one of those, Victoria, was on a call this morning with my art specialist. So this was 10 years ago. We started Forest of Imagination. And now in its 10th year, Victoria is still working with us as an early years educator. So each year we take inspiration from children's drawings, children's works, or a child who'd made a drawing the size of the obelisk in Bath in Queen's Square. And then each year working with children and young people, our students at the university and our staff. In fact, this year is the first year that every single school of study and research centre is involved in some way with the university. So here, Toby Thompson, the spoken word um, performance artist, international reputation now. We've worked with Toby since he was three. And I think importantly, you know, each, you, you know, the iconic Abbey. So each year taking over um, a familiar space and reinventing it, reimagining it. Um, but we also have serious themes. So this was 2016. Um, where we were saving the baobabs and the lemurs, the, the blue-eyed black lemurs. And in the middle, the, the thousand butterflies, everybody's different, everybody's on the move in response to um, various um, calls for action around refugee communities. We work closely with Bath Welcomes Refugees and celebrating um, the colleagues from Syria and um, Ukraine, especially, and we support those. Uh, refugee families with with our university as well as our charity and now with Forest for Imagination we work with about 55 local and international creative cultural partners and partner universities as part of the Global Academy of um, Liberal Arts and we've got an Erasmus project with four European universities as well called Interstice I'll tell you about that in a minute and obviously knowledge exchange and um, all of the the KEFs and the TEFs and the REFs, uh, all of the different acronyms in higher education. So thinking about how we can document and really uh, collate the evidence and the impact as this ongoing public engagement and creative research. So really thinking about how we integrate this collaboration in all of our modules for the university students, but also for staff development. So in 2018, we took over Spaces by the River and in a place called Kingsmead Square, we worked with a special school with 180 children and young people, not 19, with um, complex uh, needs and alongside their staff carers. So again, 180, it's one to one. We co-designed all of the learning alongside our artists and researchers and so on the bottom right Andrew Grant designed a recycled performance space based on uh, one child who could only blink and so she was able to access in her wheelchair and come into the performance space and work with the dancers. So a thousand trees made of clay, a beautiful drawing machine by my design students and so on. So I think it's very important that it the Forest of Imagination supports our creative social enterprise kind of profile. It's a creative ecosystem. It's an inclusive network. We work closely with NCASE, which is the National Centre for Academic and Cultural Exchange. And we integrate the sustainable development goals in everything we do. So with live projects across the university. And we just had good news that every student will have a module in sustainability and sustainable education going forwards from this point. So involved in that. And we're also really thinking about our assessment. So dethroning the essay and inviting students in to be involved in multimodal assessment processes. So collating this evidence of impact, not just with children, young people and families, but also with our students and our staff. And I wrote the co-wrote, co-authored the um, impact case study for the Research Excellence Framework 21 uh, around creative pedagogies and really thinking about the kind of dynamic relationships and collaboration, but also focusing on young people's agency, creative placemaking and civic innovation. So here in 2019, our last full-blown event, we were um, working with the Holborn Museum and uh, spaces inside and outside. And obviously the, the, the key themes, the big themes around, you know, this iconic Holborn Museum, but a nod to the homeless in the city. 
So this forest beacon shining a light on the kind of social structural inequalities that we are trying to address through um, participatory arts practice. So Andrew Grant's quote, Forest of Imagination is a creative ecosystem for art and participation. Uh, we lost the argument to line Pulteney Street with um, trees, but we will do it one year. And I think when 2020 hit, um, we obviously had to pivot to a digital platform. We were going to be at the beautiful old Art Deco cinema building, the Forum, but instead we were able to move to an online platform and work internationally with artists across the world. So um, we worked with Andrew Amundsen here on the, oh, sorry, on the left-hand side, um, and he works with Olafia Eliasson in Berlin. Uh, you probably know Eliasson's weather project in Tate Modern, the beautiful sun at the end of the turbine hall. And in the middle of Coles, who's a dear friend and colleague at the University of Bristol I mentioned earlier, so um, maths educator, he's written a book called Teaching Maths as Though the Planet Matters. Um, and so together, co-designing a mirror maze based on working with Phil's and Clegg Bradley Studios. And then our colleagues in India and Zimbabwe were able to join us online and co-design dance and performance workshops as well. And then obviously in 101020, we teamed up with Chris Anderson and um, Ted Countdown. We brought together um, all of the work with Earth Songs, which is with Mitch Turnbull and BBC Wildlife, but also with um, I love your Eliasson's uh, Little Sun project in Zimbabwe and responded with a 24 hour online kind of project as well. And then 21, um, again, all of this work is co designed with students at the university. So we, we then travelled around the city. So responding to the COVID bubbles, everything outside and safe and moved across the city from Beckford's Tower down to our art school on the river at Locksbrook campus up to Bath City Farm on the hill over to Bath Eastern Secret Garden and ending up actually at the American Museum um, on top of the hill where Matthew Lees, the artist I told you about who joined us 10 years ago, design student, he now works with us every single year with his team and he designed the forest um, as an, a two month installation at the American Museum with local artists and for families. So all our materials that we use are um, recycled and reused. So everything is sustainable. Um, and then Kate Cross, who's the director of the egg you met in the previous photograph, she rang me up and she said, help Penny, I've got an, an empty theater, what should we do? So um, I gave the project to, um, our students. So this is a very short film. A scalable Christmas tree for public spaces made up of smaller potted trees that are then planted after the holiday, taking a familiar form and filling it with new meaning. Together with Forest of Imagination and students from Bath School of Design, we've been using Imaginive as a tool for playful design thinking and how we could bring life to the living tree year round. We met in a virtual forest to share our ideas. That's wonderful. You want to pass it on to someone else to share? Uh, yeah, I'll pass it on to Maggie. Imagine if we could create a space in Bath. Imagine if the tree um, could change its shape and its structure. Imagine if there was the most incredible sensory a uh, real and imagined space that drew on all of the senses and also brought in some sensory tech so you were in an immersive environment where you could feel the raindrops. And we developed these ideas further using new creative and collaborative online spaces. And getting people emotionally invested and almost like if you created an installation at home with your kids or as a family, sponsor like a section of the tree, a community project. Imagine if a Christmas tree wasn't just for Christmas, but for spring, summer, autumn and winter. Up all year round. Imagine if it was a habitat for local wildlife and insects, growing native wildflowers and plants, attracting bees and butterflies. 
So we literally did that. We brought a real forest into the Egg Theatre and co-designed it with Andrew Amundsen in Berlin, Sasha and Bala Ekebena and our students. And uh, it was an incredible feat because we brought a, a real living forest into the theatre. We looked after it every day, we watered it and we took it back um, to where it was. So we planted it up in the auditorium and these orbs, 100 orbs designed with squid suit are responsive to sound and light. So all the wood was um, uh, felled in a sustainable forest, uh, fallen trees, and then each of the sounds for the bird song and the canopy um, of the forest and the roots and the mycelium network. Um, and I'll, after the call, I'll share a film with you um, that is on our website, actually. So and that's easy to share. So in the top studio, we designed an invitation for the families most impacted by COVID um, so that they could come into the, um, the Society for the Protection of Magical Creatures and adopt um, a creature in the forest working with our um, student teachers and thinking about creative learning invitations so schools visited over a period of three weeks and we were able to um, invite the community in to have a discussion about really um, live learning about the ecological emergency really thinking about hopeful futures together and so the second year, it was so successful, Kate invited us back. So we fused our ideas around the living tree with the, the magic maze that we designed during the pandemic and brought those together into an installation. And that's the film, Your Witness. So this year, and just to finish, everybody's invited to the Forest of Imagination. We open on the 14th of June in the fantastic assembly rooms in Bath. So the National Trust have just taken the assembly rooms over. And so they've invited us to um, work there for uh, a whole month until the 14th of July. And each of our university departments across architecture, education, art, design, film, theatre, humanities, science, all of them are involved in some way or another. Um, and so on live projects, some of the students' work will be accredited, so in film and in media comms, obviously my education students, um, and my students' last tutorial is in the forest. So taking the inspiration from the pleasure gardens of the 1750 uh, building, that we will be responding to the beautiful landscape around Bath and working with local artists, but also Bathscape and uh, sharing exhibitions and films of the local landscape in response to the climate emergency and inviting children, young people, local schools, our artists, and um, we're working with the Royal College of Art, Amy Cochran and Emily Boxall, who worked with Nature's Way on co-designing a documentation room. I want to show that every classroom is a work of art and that creativity is in everything, not just the art. So the provocation to children and our students is, if you were a tree, what would you be? Imagine if you could just plant one tree to save the world and that tree was you. So I think it's really inviting and Andrew's coming back to work with us with his brother who also works for Disney in LA. So they're playing with the idea of recreating the ballroom and the tea room to have exhibitions and installations inside and out. So Rosie, our student who designed the living tree just saw her film. So that will be outside the um, assembly rooms and it'll be a living planted up uh, garden with bees and butterflies invited the more than human world and we're working with Bath welcomes refugees with um, we're designing a community garden and kitchen with the Moose Cookery School and Jamie's Farm who work with um, disaffected teenagers and we're really thinking together about you know the crises plural that we're in so thinking in a hopeful way alongside wonderful artists like Morag Myerskoff We've got a disability activist group called We Are The People. Um, so I said, well, it makes sense that we are the people in the forest. So we're going to co-design the entrance through a sensory, sensory forest as you enter the assembly rooms together and have a journey where we're bringing nature into the space, into the forest. So I'm going to pause there 
Um, I'll send Martina this uh, presentation so you've got all of my uh, references and literature. Um, we have a couple of books just about to come out, as I said, my children are artists, but also we have a book based on our work in India, which is uh, around reimagining waste and um, another book forthcoming around kind of art and nature with um, Nicola Walsh and Zoe Muller. So I'll pause there and uh, open up for questions. Thank you, everyone.